and welcome to another edition of Infoscope. I'm your host, Hannah Kim. As always, we have some of the latest headlines from the IT and science world. Let's first take a look at what's coming up on Briefing Scope. The National Science Museum is running a variety of programs during the long winter vacation here in Korea, and it's been said that the events welcome people of all ages. We'll give you some details in just a moment. Now, speaking of science-related events, last month there was an art exhibition featuring collaborations between researchers and artists, while scientists performed an act in front of an adult-only crowd. Let's find out more about these stories next on Briefing Scope. The Ministry of Science, ICT, and Future Planning's Korea Foundation for the Advancement of Science and Creativity put together a science performance for adults. Titled Science Night Live, the event successfully opened in Busan and Seoul. There were also art shows featuring collaborations between scientists and artists. The National Science Museum is currently running some 79 science programs for all ages. They include three-day sleepover programs and the unlimited imagination lab that turns ideas into reality. To date, some 2,200 participants have registered and rated these programs very highly. Korean researchers have developed a new way of treating cancer by normalizing abnormal blood vessels. The treatment does not directly attack cancer cells, rather changes their environment. The researchers believe that this technique will bring forth a new foundation in cancer treatment. Going off that last segment, it seems like there are a lot of different science events for every age group, showing that science isn't just for a select group of people. Don't be shy to branch out and check out one of these events for yourself. Anyways, let's turn to our next set of stories. The seahorse is very different from other fish, lacking teeth and fins, and male seahorses are actually capable of giving birth. While it was always a mystery, researchers have now succeeded in decoding the seahorse's genome, better understanding the animal. We'll have more on this shortly, but first, we have a story about rice, one of Korea's staple foods. For a very long time in Korea, Ichon rice has been harvested in Gyeonggi-do province. However, it turns out that most of the rice grains can be traced back to Japan. The good news is that Korean researchers have recently developed a local variety that is tailored to Ichon's conditions and climate. We have more information on this coming up next on Industry Inside. Some 50 homemakers and consumers are here to evaluate eight different types of rice. They rate the freshly cooked rice based on scent and taste. The eight samples are all rice varieties cultivated in Ichun, Gyeonggi-do province. Ichun rice is sold at higher prices than the average. However, most of Ichun rice is made with Japanese varieties and the widespread production of quality local rice has dimmed the preference for Ichun rice. In order to generate additional competitiveness, Ichun requested a research institute to develop a rice variety that is suitable for the region's climate and conditions. The eight types that were sampled were selected from the initial batch. The final variety to be selected after consumer evaluation will be distributed to farmers this year. <laughs> The upgraded Ichun rice is expected to boost the competitiveness of not only rice made in Gyeonggi-do province, but also Korean rice overall. This seahorse with a bulging stomach is preparing for birth. Moments later, seahorse offspring about one centimeter tall pop out of the stomach. In September of last year, footage of a seahorse giving birth was captured in Korea for the first time. When seahorses mate, the female's eggs are fertilized in the male's brood pouch. 
After a month, the male gives birth. Now a team of researchers has uncovered the secrets of male pregnancy by completing the seahorse genome. It turns out that the genes responsible for hatching eggs are linked to the brood pouch in the male seahorse. Within the pouch, researchers discovered significant amounts of enzymes for hatching eggs and genes that generate proteins related to pregnancy. Furthermore, seahorses lack certain genes that explain why they have no fins. The researchers confirmed the effect of the genes by silencing them in a zebrafish. Furthermore, seahorses suck their food with their long, tube-like mouth because they lack the genes for teeth. This gene affects the olfactory sense as well, showing why seahorses visually track their food instead of sniffing it out. Having found out how genes dictate the appearance of animals, the researchers hope that this will help them better understand genetic changes in evolution. Honey is a versatile sweetener that not only tastes good, but also tackles colds and coughs and helps prevent lifestyle diseases like hypertension. As long as the seal of the jar remains unbroken, honey can last virtually forever. That's because it's difficult for microorganisms to proliferate in honey, which is 70% sugar and 20% moisture. Substances from flowers further make honey inhospitable for microorganisms. 지금 당분 이외에도 이제 벌들이 꽃으로부터 항균력을 나타내는 성분들을 또 불어옵니다. 그렇기 때문에 항균력 항균 효과가 매우 강합니다. The situation changes once the jar is opened. Then it's best to consume honey as quickly as possible due to exposure to air and pollutants. Honey also contains small amounts of pollen, making it unsuitable for those with pollen allergies. Furthermore, as babies less than 12 months old do not have a fully developed immune system, honey can do more harm than good. Occasionally, white deposits will form in honey, but experts say that these are from flowers brought by bees and are safe to eat. Moving on, Korean researchers have developed a new type of material that can be applied like paint. And more surprisingly, this material is capable of converting heat to electricity. By using this material, we will now be able to recycle heat in our everyday lives. Now, in other news, a dog's sense of smell is significantly more sensitive than that of humans, which is why they sniff out drugs at airports and do search tests in disaster zones. Well, now, researchers have used a 3D printer to print out an imitation of a dog's nose in order to create an air detector. What does this model look like? We have the answer for you right now on Tech of Peak. You'll often see dogs working in airports. With a sense of smell that is 100,000 times more sensitive than that of humans, dogs use some 300 million cells to sniff out drugs and do search tasks. Whenever a dog sniffs, it inhales and exhales five times per second. A team of U.S. researchers analyzed the airflow around a dog's snout in order to use its sniffing capability as a form of technology. The researchers printed a 3D replica of the dog's nose and observed the airflow while the nose inhaled and exhaled. What they found was that when a dog exhales, air jets draw the air downward toward the nostrils. There's an exhale down to the right of the screen. When the dog exhales, he's literally reaching out and entraining or pulling air towards himself for why the dog is this amazing chemical detector. Attaching the artificial nose to a vapor detector improved its functions by a factor of 16, four centimeters away from the source. The device precisely detected the substance even with a very small amount of air. The researchers hope to use the new technology to detect not only explosives and drugs, but also cancer or pathogenic cells. The results of this research were published in the journal Scientific Reports. Solar energy is one of the best-known forms of renewable energy. However, one major limitation is that production fails on cloudy days or at night. One possible solution is to focus on thermoelectricity that converts heat into energy. 
This would involve creating electricity from the temperature difference between the atmosphere and sunlit surfaces. It converts waste heat into an energy source and removes the need for coolants. The problem is that conventional thermoelectric materials come in the form of hard blocks. Naturally, their efficiency drops on curvy surfaces. A team of Korean researchers developed a type of thermoelectric material that can be applied to any surface, much like paint. The researchers turned conventional materials into a liquid form and added cohesive substances. The resulting material has the same degree of efficiency as solid-state materials. 일반 가정이 가정의 건물들의 외벽에 칠한다거나 자동차 외관을 칠한다거나 그런 선박에 칠을 해서 그로부터 나오는 열들을 우리가 전기로 만들어서 사용할 수 있을 것이라 예상합니다. The researchers hope to create a new renewable energy system in which not only this waste heat but also body heat and geothermal heat can be used more efficiently. A typical cancer treatment regime involves injection of anti-cancer medication or radioactive therapy. These treatments can be effective, but they also affect normal cells and the immune system. To reduce the side effects, researchers have developed a way to shine light only on cancer cells. However, the treatment is cumbersome as patients must stay inside a dark room, and there's still a debate about whether normal cells are affected or not. Now Korean researchers have developed a way to target only cancer cells, twice, with light, by using nano-sized capsules. Hyaluronsan is in the air, so we have a nano-sized capsule. We have a very strong effect of the air, so we don't have any damage to the air. We have no damage to the air. Capsules attached to cancer cells are exposed to light, generating heat, which is used as the first wave of attack. This heat melts the gold on the surface of the capsule, releasing the medication inside. These make up the second wave of attack. They are exposed to light again, creating reactive oxygen species, which finally eliminate cancer cells. A test with lab mice showed that cancer cells were completely destroyed in 15 days. The researchers believe that this treatment can be applied to types of cancer that are easier to shine light on, such as breast cancer, skin cancer, and gastric cancer. We had another jam-packed episode today here on Infiscope. We hope you enjoyed the stories we shared from the artificial dog nose to the local Ichun rice grains. And who knew that honey may not be suitable for young children? I definitely learned a lot today myself, but this brings me to the end of the show. Remember that we will be back again next week with more from IT and Science. Have a great day and I'll see you back soon. Goodbye everyone. <laughs>